tattoos? Get one. Definitely. Get one. I think they're really ugly. I've never seen one yet that I like. I think tattoos are beautiful. I think they're amazing. I cringe. I just feel the best, but I mean... It's like having a thousand cigarettes put out in your sleep. My parents were really too happy about that. My parents didn't mind that I got tattooed. I haven't told my mom. My mother was too I got a piercing when I was five, I got my second one when I was 13, I got my third one when I was 18. What do I do next? I would highly suggest getting a tattoo to anybody. There's something that you should really consider doing first. It's so permanent that how you feel when you're, let's say, 18 years old, 22 years old when you're getting this tattoo, you may not want to be wearing that tattoo anymore when you're, let's say, 62 or something. I got a cross and it has like, it's a cross made out of nails. And below the nails I have three blood drops and then it says race on it. One big one, working on it, <laughs> it will eventually be a bodysuit. Meaning is hesed, uh, which is Hebrew for um, covenant loyalty or unconditional love. I have been planning on getting this tattoo for quite a while. I've been wanting to for over a year. I've been putting it off, so to say, because this is a bit of a commitment and it's not something I would want to rush into. Tattoos are a very, dare I say, spiritual thing. But I mean, if, if at very least they're a very personal thing and they, to me they have to have some meaning in order for it to be valid to get them. I don't find anything attractive about them. I think it is, it's an expression, or they're trying to express something about themselves, I think. Right. I'm gonna get a tattoo, writ it's in Hebrew, it's pronounced Batel, and it means daughter of God. You're generally doing a tattoo for yourself. So you don't necessarily have to pronounce to the world, you know, this is what happened on this day at this time, as long as you know what it means to you. Not really trying to make a statement for other people, but if people ask me about it, I guess it gives me an opportunity to talk about what I believe and why I believe it and why this is important, this concept is important to me. And I think part of it too is just like, you know, my dad, he, my earthly father is no longer with me, so I sort of have to depend on God when times are really rough and I need a father. So that's part of the reason, too, why it gives me an opportunity to do that. Shop selection is really, really important. Um, just because a shop is a professional shop doesn't mean that they're operating up to a, a good, good standard. My first tattoo, I got done in, in Blazing Tattoos down in Sioux City. And then the second one on my shoulder, um, I got done at a place called Big Bill's, and it's in Montana in my hometown. My first one, I got done at a place called The Tattoo Shop in Sioux Falls. Um, cost me 150 bucks, and the second one I got done in a place, can't even remember the name, but it was in Durango, Mexico, and it cost me $25. You know? Uh, there's this place called Maya Tattoos, it's in uh, Sioux City. I researched a few areas, and some people I had known had uh, gone there, and they had uh, like excellent health reviews, stuff like that, were totally certified. Rob and I, uh did some work with the city to get some laws passed. It took us a year to draw up all the laws and get them all corrected with the city attorney, and it was a really involved, like, uh, strenuous uh, process, but we got it done. And so now there's actual laws in Sioux City. I mean, the local health authority really doesn't uh, put a passion into checking what they're supposed to check. They have a checklist that they check through, and that's it. They just make sure that you have everything on the list. Doesn't, they don't actually go in there and actually check your setup or the techniques that you use. Um, you can have the most clean equipment in the world, but if you set it up wrong, it's still dirty. So um, now there's like 
regulations and people uh, coming in doing like checkups on us and everybody in the city and there's an actual like uh, there's actual laws now and that's really awesome I'm really proud of what we accomplished in that uh, just our sterilization techniques of what we do um, we go through a four-step process of sterilization where all tools are going to be um, all tools are going to be uh, initially soaking in a disinfectant solution then they go through a manual scrub into an ultrasonic solution which is using sound waves to pretty much vibrate the uh, the tools gets off any uh, any debris. Then from there they get dried and bagged and then sterilized. So it's a fairly large process in order just to sterilize the tools. Um, the Iowa state regulations state that you need to have a sterilizer. Doesn't make sure that you actually know how to use the sterilizer. And that's kind of one thing that we've gone is yes, we have a sterilizer, but we also know how to use it. I'm excited, but I'm still a bit nervous because it's like, uh, 